In 1943, during the Second World War, the mayor of Tokyo issued a distressing order to euthanize three elephants housed in the Yuno Zoo. The Allied forces were conducting relentless air raids over Tokyo, and there was a fear that these elephants might break free due to the bombings and rampage through the city. John, the male elephant, and Tonki, the female, were originally brought from India, while the third, Hanako, came from Thailand. These three amazing elephants had quickly become a significant part of Tokyo's culture, loved by both locals and visitors. They were a major tourist attraction and held a special place in the hearts of Tokyo's children. Unfortunately, despite their widespread popularity, a heartbreaking decision was made the mandate to euthanize these beloved elephants, an order to be carried out by any means necessary. Putting down such a massive beast is no easy task. It was a tragic and drawn-out process, marked by tragic success. At first, officials tried to put the elephants to sleep using needles, but their skin was too thick for the needles to work. They also attempted to poison the food, but the elephants were smart enough to avoid eating the poisoned meals. Eventually, it was decided that the three elephants would not be given any food at all, causing their starvation and passing. Accounts vividly depict Donkey, the longest surviving among the three elephants, performing desperate displays of tricks whenever a human passed by the enclosure hoping to get at least a tiny bit of food, but it was all in vain. The adults' decision to take their beloved elephants away in such a cruel manner left the children of Japan utterly devastated. In response to this heartbreaking turn of events, they started a passionate campaign by writing and sending letters to the upper house of the Japanese parliament. What began as their way to express personal sorrow turned into a strong public campaign asking for the elephants to be saved and finding a more compassionate solution. The campaign continued and letters kept coming for six long years. The parliament received thousands of letters, many of which were directed to the Prime Minister of India, asking for a replacement for their beloved elephant. As fate would have it, the Prime Minister of India at that time was none other than the revered Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the hero of today's story. Welcome to a century of stories presented by IDFC First Bank. Always you first. I'm Kunal Jekar and today I will tell you a story from the time when PM Nehru sent an elephant to Japan. Also known as Chacha Nehru by kids and students across the country, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was famous for his love and admiration for young minds. Nehru's enduring and warm rapport with children had not only earned him adoration within India, but also garnered respect and admiration globally. Now, back to the letters. The letters were delivered to the Prime Minister's office in New Delhi by Himanshu Niyogi, a Calcutta exporter who took time off during a business trip to visit Tokyo schools. The children there presented him with bouquets of flowers and took group pictures with him. As Niyogi was getting ready to return to India, they implored him to talk to the then Prime Minister Nehru on their behalf, requesting an Indian elephant. Upon Niyogi's return to India, he visited Jawaharlal Nehru's office and left a pouch containing 815 letters from children in Japan. Among the many letters flooding Nehru's office, there was one that stood out. It was a sincere letter in English from Sumiko Kanatsu, a student in Nigishi Primary School, Tokyo. In her touching letter, she expressed her sadness about the lack of interesting things at Tokyo Zoo, saying, At Tokyo Zoo, we can only see pigs and birds which gave us no interest. 
It is a long cherished dream for Japanese children to see a large, charming elephant. Can you imagine how much we want to see the animal? There was another letter. This one from Masanori Yamato of Saisi Grade School, Tokyo, with the same feelings. Masanori wrote, The elephant still lives with us in our dreams. Nehru, deeply moved by the sincere handwritten letters from these Japanese children, felt compelled to take some action. Being the seasoned statesman that he was, Nehru also recognized this opportunity to initiate something significant. He aimed not only to address the desires of the children, but also saw this as a chance to build strong and meaningful ties for the newly independent India on a global stage. And so it was decided. India would send an elephant as a sign of goodwill and friendship to fulfill the wishes of the children of Japan. In response to this sincere request, Nehru assigned the Ministry of External Affairs this task. He instructed them to work with the former princely states to find an elephant, arrange the necessary funds and plan its transportation. The elephant was chosen from the former princely state of Mysore and in just a few months, the selected elephant named Indira began her trip to Tokyo. This act represented India's response to the children's wishes and marked the start of a special connection between the two countries. When Indira arrived at Ueno on September 25th, 1949, it caused an enormous amount of excitement in Tokyo. The zoo was filled with thousands of visitors who were eager to see the new elephant. Tadamichi Koga, the zookeeper at the time, later said that Indira's arrival was one of the most happiest and satisfying moments of his life. When Indira first arrived, she only understood commands given in Kannada. To bridge this communication gap, her two Japanese handlers worked hard to learn the language, which they learned from the two Indian mahouts who had accompanied the elephant from Mysore. For two months, these handlers devoted themselves to learning Kannada, investing a lot of time and effort. This effort allowed them to establish a basic but effective way to communicate, which helped them connect with Indira. Accompanying the elephant on his journey was a heartfelt letter by Nehru addressing the children of Japan. In his message, he expressed his hopeful vision. He said, I hope that when the children of India and the children of Japan grow up, they will serve not only their great countries, but also the cause of peace and cooperation all over Asia and the world. So you must look upon this elephant, Indira by name, as a messenger of affection and goodwill from the children of India. The elephant is a noble animal. It is wise and patient, strong and yet gentle. I hope all of us will also develop these qualities. Until she passed away, Indira stood as a strong symbol of the deep friendship between Japan and India. Her presence kept reminding everyone of the special connection that began with her arrival, proving the lasting and treasured relationship between these two countries. However, this event wasn't the only instance of India's compassionate gestures towards foreign nations. Nehru responded to similar heartfelt letters from children in both Berlin and Canada by vowing to fulfill their wishes. In June 1951, a three-year-old elephant named Shanti, symbolizing peace, was sent to Berlin, further strengthening diplomatic ties between India and Germany. A few years later, a similar gesture was extended to Canadian children with a two-year-old elephant calf called Ambika. These acts of goodwill were more than just about making the children happy. They symbolized post-colonial India's desire for international recognition 
and served as a means to showcase the nation's commitment to global connections. They garnered positive attention and crafted a favorable image of the country during a time of substantial reliance on external aid. You've been watching A Century of Stories presented by IDFC First Bank. Always you first. The World Cup final is just on the corner and so in the next episode, I will bring you the story of the first time India lifted the Cricket World Cup, the magnificent year of 1983.